welcome to the studio today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a wonderful day wherever you are at. Today in the studio, I'm painting this beautiful little uh, oceanside scene. This happens to be a little fish dock in the town that I live on here on the west coast in California. Uh, as you can see, I've pre-drawn the picture on a piece of B paper. Uh, I have the paper taped down to this piece of plastic because I bought it in a giant roll and cut this down myself. This paper happens to be, the size of this paper happens to be uh, 12 by 12 to give you a little bit of a reference there. Uh, the brush that I'm currently using is a Raphael Soft Aqua brush. I'm also going to be using some Da Vinci uh, Casaneo brushes and uh, maybe a Princeton Select brush for some rigor work here. Uh, the colors that I'm using, you can see them in the upper right hand corner. These are all or mostly all M. Graham watercolor paints. I think the only color that is not M. Graham there is the white uh, in there, and that is uh, that's a, a variety of different whites. Uh, in fact, it's probably just white gouache. Uh, what I'm using here currently is a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue with some sepia mixed in and a little bit of whatever colors are left on my palette from my previous painting. I just want to get some blue-ish color in there. We can adjust this later, uh, but I like the uh, differences in the colors of blue that, that come in there. And there we go, a little bit darker as it gets towards us and a little lighter as it goes away from us. And then I'm just taking out a little bit of the reflection of the sailboat that's there. I took this picture about, I would say, three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, uh, as we've all been locked away in our homes, or here in California, we've all been locked away in our homes um, and being socially distant for everybody. I've taken to getting up in the morning and going on some nice long walks around my town, and I've discovered quite a bit of uh, my town that I didn't really know before. Here I'm just dropping in some clouds, some sky. That's a cerulean blue, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue in there, and uh, mixed with a little bit of some gray, just some palette colors, whatever's there. Mix them all together, drop them in there. It's going to give us a pretty effective sky, and then, and then pull that right down to the horizon line. There we go just straight on across there. It's going to get a little bit lighter or should get a little bit lighter as we get on towards the horizon. So a little bit darker uh, at the top of the page, a little bit lighter at the horizon line. But there we go. You can see quickly, easily, nothing to it. I've got a a nice bit of, uh, of sky there. I should say that uh, the, the picture, the reference picture has a couple of clouds in it. Uh, this area is pretty notorious for not having a whole lot of clouds. So when I was uh, learning to paint watercolors years ago, I was a member of a, uh, a website, uh, and I would post questions to the group. How do I do this? How do I do that? Um, and one of the questions that I posted was, how do I paint a better sky? At the time, all my skies were just monochromatic, whether that be cerulean or cobalt or some other blue. And the advice I got was, go outside, look at the clouds, and try to paint them. And I kept telling the group, um, that's really hard for me because about 300 days of the year, we don't have any clouds. <laughs> so... It's hard to uh, it's hard to get out and, and do that. And on those days that we do have clouds, it's typically cold and rainy and uh, not a whole lot of fun to be painting in. Uh, but eventually I've figured out how to paint clouds. I don't or figured out how to paint skies a little bit better. Um, 
those of you who watch my channel will probably be saying, yes, you know how to do it, but you don't often do it. And uh, that's there's some truth to that. Uh, I do I do try to take quite a bit of inspiration from what I see around me. And since the clouds, or I since the sky is absent of clouds, often the skies I paint are absent of clouds also. All right, so uh, I'm just putting in a little bit of the darks in this dock area here. I'm going to go over this time and time again, several times, until I think I get it right. Uh, but this area, to me, is just a big dark in there, and it doesn't need too much to be... Um, uh, too much detail in there. I can basically put a dark area in there, highlight the boards uh, that are closest to me, and uh, that'll probably be pretty good. All right, in the, in the ship here, I'm not necessarily sticking with the, the colors on this the sailboat. Uh, I'm putting my own colors on here, and then and that's fine. It's a, it's a boat. Uh, painting around a little buoy here, or a little, a little bag that keeps you from running into the uh, the side of whatever you're parked in. Do you park a boat, dock, <laughs> whatever you're docked against the boat? You can tell I'm a I'm a big uh, seafaring person, not knowing the lingo, uh, but that's okay. All right, I uh, haven't I haven't dried my page yet. Um, Actually, I, I, I take that back. I, I dried my page once. Uh, you can see everything is kind of uh, a duller color. Everything's kind of run together, and that's good. That gives us a nice undertone painting here. And I'm going to come back and, like I said, put on some wood here on the dock. It looks very dark here, very dark, but uh, that's going to dry a lot lighter than it is. Or than it looks right now and I'm going to drop in some darks underneath here and I'm not overly concerned about what color these are I just want some darks I've got some burnt umber there at the very edge is sepia now I'm going to drop some blues in here and you're going to see that the mixing of these is going to make a wonderful wonderful dark area uh, underneath this dock Look at that. Uh, looks fantastic underneath there. All the colors that melt together. And as it dries, all of these colors are going to show through just that little bit more. There we go. There's a, something up there causing a little bit of shadow on the water. Or a little bit of reflection, I guess I should say, on the water. Uh, and no, my picture is not going to turn out and look exactly like the reference photo and that is totally okay again i i use the reference photo not to try to make an exact copy of but just to use it as a reference as a as a tool to guide me rather than a tool to enforce that i'm doing things a certain way uh in this dock again i'm just putting in some some darks you're going to see me put a lot of uh, dark colors in here, whether it be sepia, whether it be burnt umber, whether it be uh, a bit of yellow ochre, or whether I mix some of my own uh, colors to put in there. Now here, this is cobalt blue on the cover for this sail. I don't know why boats use a lot of cobalt blue, uh, but they do. I th maybe because it looks so nice um, as you're out at sea or whatnot. Uh, I've got this little bit where I painted the sky over there. I should have come back and just eased that off ever so slightly. But I didn't. Um, and there's a lot of machinery up here on top of the docks. Like I said, this is actually a, a fish dock. And that's a big crane that's used to haul crates of frozen fish off of the fishing vessels that come in uh, each morning or afternoon. Uh, into my little town, and then they're offloaded and sent to parts unknown. Here we go. Here's a little bit of 
looks like burnt umber there making a nice strong uh, plank of wood there and that should continue on on the other side I believe a little red oh uh, there's a life uh, saver right there let me paint that in good 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 uh, and I'm gonna say at this point if you guys like me painting uh, my town images of my town uh, please uh, leave a comment down below and let me know I I'll continue to go out and grab pictures of my town and come back and try to paint them I do tend to believe that you paint better those things that you have a, an affection for or a feeling for and I love my little town it's a fantastic little town and so I think I try a little bit harder to do a little bit better maybe with these pictures from my town I don't know um, you guys ultimately will be the judge but I think that's true all right now here's one thing I wish I had done differently on this painting uh, the hand railing that you see there I didn't draw it with any real perspective lines. It should have gotten smaller as it got away from us and uh, a little larger as it came towards us. And that, I think, is my biggest failing in this painting. Uh, kind of <laughs> really does make me a bit upset that, uh, that I didn't notice that as I was doing my drawing. But uh, we'll go with it. And this is a 12 by 12. If we frame this as a, uh, I don't know, 10 by 7, 9 by, 11 by 7, no, not 11 by 17. If we frame this somewhat smaller than a 12 by 12, we can crop some of that out and limit uh, how that looks to some extent. And uh, it's going to, the impact of that's going to be reduced. So in the end, I'm not that worried about it, but it does, it does bother me a bit. Okay. As, uh, as uh, things are drying here, I'm just moving around the painting, trying to uh, paint in one area. Another something that won't run uh, from one area to another area. This is the, I'm getting on to the time in the painting where I want to make sure that all my lines stay a bit crisper, maybe, uh, so that I can define a few things here and there. Uh, and so I don't want to uh, I don't want to paint uh, a wet surface next to a wet surface and have it run all over the place. Oh, it looks like I'm going to paint a few boats out here on the water. That's what I've left back there. Just a little bit of blue on a shadow side of them. Not much. I'm not going to do a whole lot with those little boats. They're way back there. You can just barely see them in the reference photo. If you look out into the harbor uh, where I took this picture on any given day, there are probably, I don't know, between 100 and 200 boats moored out there. There are always boats out there. It kind of makes it nice to look out and it makes it look like the, the harbor's a busy place. All right, I've got a uh, support beam on here. Yeah, I just noticed, I just noticed that my hand railing is not quite right. Uh, I tried to round the edge off a little bit, and eh, I'm not sure it worked, but when we frame this up, we'll never notice. That part I can guarantee you. Doing a little bit more detail work on some of the things that are up here on the dock. Again, the whole thing looks a little dark right now. It's slightly damp. It's going to continue to dry and lighten up as it goes. And while I have some darks here, I can do some work on the windows on my boat. And in fact, I think I can do some work on a lot of the rest of this boat. Along the roof here, there's maybe a tarp laying here. There it goes underneath. <clears throat> underneath the uh, the sail that's covered up some darks over there some wood i don't know let's put something on the top of this sailboat so that it's not just a a white top let's give it some kind of interest here something up in the front 
there we go it doesn't always matter exactly what it is that's there the fact that there's maybe a blop of color there would do a bit more go a bit further than anything in some instances all right i've got some darks i'm mixing up now and i'm going to try to uh, get the outline of the sailboat a little ripple on the water here there's the mast here's the edge of the boat i'm going to fill this in and i'm going to use some of this blue in here that puddle of blue that i've got mixed up i don't want it to be too dark i want it to stay lighter than the reflection next to it the reflection of the dock but darker than the water around it um, i'm going to come back and do some more with the water after i see what this dries up like but uh, for now that's what i've got with it what else can i do right there's an anchor here and there's going to be some uh, rigging on the top of this uh, boat that i can do uh, and on cue i've switched to a rigger brush here we go some aluminum that's out here the bow spit i guess that's called maybe and what else can i do here <laughs> i've got <clears throat> the top of this let's define a few more things up here a shadow line on the lifesaver trying to think what it is and then here's that ball i'm going to paint uh, <laughs> this gives me a little bit more trouble than i thought it was going to it's orange i put a little orange on there a little red to darken it up that didn't look quite right dab a little blue on there for a shadow i'm going to come back and and get that later and then i'm going to do a little work on the crane I don't know exactly what how they use this crane and I guess it doesn't really matter there's just some big long lines coming off of this it's it's not that important to get it perfect let's just get some lines in there and I think now I'm gonna do some masts on everything and some rigging hold the paper down I just pull it straight towards me I try to use big muscles and pull in straight lines sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't there we go so i'm just getting a little wet I, I left a little space right there there's a little flag i forgot to paint up there i'm going to come back and get that in just a second look right here a little flag a red part a blue part just draw it quick as that nothing to it I got my flag uh, and now just pull the mask right out that same color a dark just a gray ish color and try to make it one thickness the entire way all of a sudden now it looks like a sailboat still got a, quite a bit of work to do on it but it looks like a sailboat it looks like something that's floating out there that you could be on yes here I'm gonna darken some of the water up here uh, by darkening the water in the foreground here this should help to pull the front of this painting towards the viewer and the lighter bits in the back should help to push it back away so that we're not a flat painting anymore and here we go I'll leave a little bit of light in there uh, there's a little reflection on some of the ripples of water in here perfect and all the way out not much further than that that water goes back there but it's all the same color after we get past our boat there we go quick as that we've got a bit of paint on oh well we'll put some darks back here there we go just to keep that area 
nice and dark back there. I don't want that to be too light. I don't want it to look like there's too much light shining through there, but maybe, maybe just a little bit. You can definitely see that there's there's a big uh, a a big dock right there. There's going to be a, just a, a touch of a shadow line. I'm not happy with the way the hull of this boat looks. It doesn't look quite rounded enough. Uh, it looks it looks a little flat in the front. So what I'm what I'm trying to do is go back on here and just give it a little bit more dimension. Hopefully, give it a little bit more dimension. Something like that. Now, it, now hopefully, it looks like uh, that boat is has some roundness to that hull. And drop in some more details. So really, they're not details. They're just lines here and there that are going to give some interest to this boat. And now that my sail is done, I'm gonna, just going to drop some of that same color just a second coat of it on uh, that sail covering and, and make it look like maybe there's a little bit of a shadow there or something. And a little bit more on the, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, a little bit more on uh, that tarp maybe that's on the top of the boat, something like that. I'm going to come back and I'm going to get that that bag to keep it from bashing into the dock in a second. And I'm going to get some more of the the timbers on this dock. There we go. And, and if you notice, they have lightened quite a bit. It looked almost like it was black uh, about five minutes ago. Now it really looks like uh, it's lightened way up. And I can go and put in some lines to, to really give it some dimension and make it look like something here. There's one, and, and we're going to start to differentiate all of these different boards right now. This is, and this is how we're going to do it. And that comes into, there's some dark in there. I don't know that I needed to do that. I'll just must that up just a little bit. And this, there's a board in there I'm trying to get. It's a dark area. <clears throat> I do, uh, anybody who's watched me before, I do turn my board quite a bit. Uh, it just makes it a bit easier to, to paint in one direction than in another. This is just some yellow ochre on top of what I've got painted there. Just to change the color of some of the these big timbers ever so slightly I don't need to change it a whole lot but just a just a slight change it might be a bit hard to see in the video but in real life it totally comes out and it's pretty easy to see and I'm just gonna keep working here's a little bit of white to give just a touch of highlight onto a couple of things and we're getting close to the end on this one now got most of it and here I'm going to try to work on that, that that bag again it's fighting me it didn't want to dry that that dastardly thing but I'll get it just like that, and that kind of makes it look uh, makes it look more 3D. And that's about all I've got for you. That's the painting. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, down below, I've got links to Instagram, Twitter, and my website. Also to coffee site if you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee and keep me going in the studio here. I would very much appreciate it. And if you don't, that's okay too. Thank you all for stopping by and I uh, hope you enjoyed the painting. I enjoyed having you guys here. We'll see you back in the studio next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.